Lone Star, a Sailor Moon podcast. I'm your host, Alex, and this week, Chris and I will be covering the 15th episode of the Deke Dub, titled Dangerous Dollies. It's the 18th episode in the official series lineup. Do you remember being creeped out by this one as a kid? Uh, it reminds me a little bit of Goosebumps, if you guys also remember that one. It's not scary as an adult or anything, but if I were going to watch this, maybe like say you caught it on TV and you're like seven years old or something and maybe you're watching it and it's dark. Yeah, this one is super creepy in my opinion. Uh, what do you guys think? Sound off in the comments. Nothing really to share in Sailor Moon news this week. Uh, I have a little, a couple of things brewing, uh, but not anything we can really talk about yet, but it is exciting and I'm going to get to share some of it here with you guys. Uh, And we might be hearing a new voice soon, uh, just in a couple segments here and there, so you can look forward to that. Somebody you guys probably, if you're in the Sailor Moon fandom, you may know of this person already, I don't know, you probably do. Um, And they also have a podcast as well, which... When they're actually on the show, we'll share that with you. Other than that, in the official Sailor Moon world, though, there's not really any news. So, yeah, let's just jump into the episode. I'll see you guys in the outro. Bye. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Pretty good. I had a nice week overall. That's good. Yeah. What did you do last week? What did I do? Oh, I had um, two interviews, and then uh, that was like the most interesting thing. Um, I was out in the city the other night, but this weekend I've just been staying home because it's been super cold again here. Yeah, you were saying. Uh, well, who did you interview last week? A couple voice actors. Um, one of them is getting named uh, Gavin Hammond, who is a new character in the latest Fire Emblem game. And then the other one was um, a woman named uh, Chandni Parekh. She's uh, one of the characters in the latest Genshin Impact update. And she's also uh, Lola Bunny and Harley Quinn in um, kid show versions of uh, Loon- like current Looney Tunes and Batman shows that are on right now, too. Oh, that's cool. Those are really iconic characters. Mm-hmm. For sure. Well, that's exciting. Congratulations on that. Uh, have you ever interviewed anybody from Card Captors? Uh, yeah, from not so much from the. I've done some people that were in the original dub that was on TV that was heavily censored. I've done people that were in the LA dub of the second movie, and then I've done people that are in the Clear Card dub. How many different dubs are there? Do you know? There's three in terms of uh, U.S. or so North there's, America. There's the Nelvana one, which is the original that was on TV around the same time as Sailor Moon. So if you are my generation, you probably remember that one. It's got Sakura Avalon in it. And Kiro Barros sounded like a um, like a bro dude kind of guy. And then that's the only one I've ever seen. What are the other two like? Well, the, the other North... The other... Um... The first North American one after the Canadian dub that you were just mentioning, uh, that was, um, for some reason, the second movie was dubbed uh, in L.A. with, like, a pretty all-star L.A. cast. Um, They were just a one-off thing, though, obviously. And uh, the other one is the the dub of Clear Card, which is done by um, Funimation voice actors in Texas. But they didn't go back and do the beginning. No, th- yeah, they didn't. They didn't redub the original series. They just dubbed Clear Card. So does the original series only have one dub of it? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I guess we might get an original redub at some point then, because they really. You want to talk about like issues with editing and continuity and stuff? Sailor Moon is nothing compared to what they did with Card Captors. I know. <laughs> uh, it's. I still love it though, and because um, I was, I have some of the old tapes from it, of course. And I was looking at them, and I noticed there weren't that many. And when I was trying to see, well, let's see if we can get the full thing. They actually only released uh, nine volumes, 
yeah. we did volumes one to nine, and the episodes were not necessarily in order. And then I think there's something where like they go through the end of the first arc and then they jump back <laughs> into a couple episodes for no reason mm-hmm. that like happened before that. It's so bizarre. Uh, but I love the art on them. They're similar to the Sailor Moon ones in that yep. sense. Did you ever have any of those? Uh, I think I just had the first, like the very first VHS volume, and that was it. That's the most common one. Um, everyone's probably, if well, if you were a fan back then, you probably saw the art from it somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I've had a lot of fun going back to that this past week. And then the other thing has been the Sailor Moon collectible card game. Did you ever play that? No, but I saw your post, though. Oh my gosh. Do you ever play any card games like that? I didn't play anything. I just collected stuff. Well, they're not... They're fun for collecting, actually. Uh, And it's... If you're just about collecting, it's kind of great, because they only did the first two seasons, so there's a limited number of cards. If you're someone who's into, like, Pokemon cards, the idea of collecting every single one is kind of an impossibility at this Mm -hmm. point. Because, you know, it's so oversaturated but these are like a tight with both sets somewhere around 200 maybe a little more or less uh and that's kind of a doable thing but also the game is really fun like the mechanics of it and stuff and something i learned this week that i hadn't talked about before was unlike a lot of the other ones you can play with more than one person like it was designed to be played in groups of friends so you're supposed to be like i'm mercury and i'm jupiter and i'm you know whoever and then you can choose like whose monsters you attack each turn and stuff i thought that was kind of cool because i don't know that and a lot of other ones do that Mm -hmm. Uh, so anyway that was my week Uh, you've been doing a lot more professional stuff i'm like playing with (laughs) old toys but whatever i also (laughs) teach leave me alone i do things uh (laughs) how, how do you feel about this episode dangerous dollies in english was it called for japanese let me check. I just watched it again earlier today. Um, it's called Shingo's Innocent Love, a sorrowful French doll. Dolls are usually pretty playthings, but not today on Sailor Moon, when some beautiful dolls suddenly become frightening pawns of Neflite's evil forces. The Sailor Scouts have their hands full. Stop, you monster! Stay put! Sailor Moon will be right back! It's, it sounds so much more, like, romanticized <laughs> in the Japanese one. Dangerous Dollies sounds like um, like a Goosebumps episode mm-hmm. <laughs> or something, like children horror. What do you think of this one? I actually really like it. Uh, I'm sure a lot of it has to do with, though, that uh, episode 18 was the second ever episode that Ikuko Ito did character designs for. I was going to ask you about it. It's the person we saw from which one? What was her first, the first one? Ep- the first episode that she did was episode five. Episode five. Do you have the title for that's that? That's a Chinella. Oh, yeah. That's so the like, one that wasn't yeah. translated. So this would be the first episode by them that we ever saw in America back then. And yep. the art style definitely stood out to me today, especially with mm-hmm. the monster the way they designed it, the way it moved. Um, There were a couple of frames that were kind of like, oh, that's different. Like, it wasn't bad, but I was like, wait, what's going on there? So I wanted to know who the um, animator was. I'm curious if... It's the queen. (laughs) So she's the one, uh, and you can tell it's it's definitely elevated. Even even though last week was a good one, it's, it's higher than that on animation um mm-hmm. we're about i would say what do you think how far into neflite's arc are we mm. well he dies in like episode 24 so it's like pretty Around much eight, like 18 but yeah yeah we're sort of like mm, probably i don't know two thirds or a third of the way through it then mm. uh but I'm we're starting to notice Queen Beryl is like getting a little impatient with him. And this right. is also where Zoysite starts to kind of provoke him or, or like, you know, poke at him. What uh in the Japanese version, what 
Do you remember what she says, what she does? Or what he does. <laughs> um, he, yeah, I'm sorry, because I'm watching it in English, so it's Kristen Bishop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he pretty much, I'm sure it's really similar. He just says that, in his mind, he says that he's glad that Nephrite's doing exactly what he wants him to do. Meaning, like, uh, getting all uppity and wanting to work alone. That's what he's yeah. looking for, basically. Because he knows that's going to lead to him failing eventually no! uh, it seems to me that those three little girls are giving you a lot of trouble Neflite. perhaps you need a little bit more of the feminine touch am i right queen bell it sounds like a good idea zoicide could be helpful no way Queen Beryl thinks that we should work together it appears that Queen Beryl has given the job to me I do as I like I work alone Excuse me. He's so arrogant. At this point, I think the relationship between Queen Beryl and Zoisite comes off a little more like they're both on the same team. And I feel like that mm -hmm. shifts kind of drastically later. Do you remember that? Yeah. Do they seem as sort of chummy in the Japanese version? Mm. I, I know, I think it's more just, like, you know, servant and boss. It's not really that, it's not really that they're, that they're friends. I thought it might be a little different, because it seemed a little more playful than made sense to me, just for Queen Beryl's personality in general. Um, this is a rare episode in a couple of ways, but one of them is that it's one of a few that focus on Shingo or Sammy, we don't get a ton. The only other one I, I remember is Mercury saving him in Super S at the beach. Uh, oh, I guess. And then the Chanel episode, right? Mm-hmm. Do you remember any other ones? No, I think that's it. I mean, the, if there is one in R, I don't really remember it, but I know there isn't any in S. Because I think what ends up happening is just as we add more scouts, there's just not room for it so much, really. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's I guess it's nice that we get something like that now uh i think Rini kind of takes his place a little in a way though with because they, yeah. they they use him now to do these sort of like very young it's like puppy love i guess you know what i mean like oh i'm in like fourth grade and i think this girl has pretty hair so i'm gonna give her a, a present you know like that kind of thing yeah um and then they move that over to Rini later on so it, it, that's one thing that's kind of different about this. Uh, who is the, quote, human of the week that we're going to have? So, like, the friend that is so important that we never see again. Oh, you mean, like, in the, just in this episode? Yeah. Well, it, you mean, like, the focus of... Uh, well, yeah, Mika. Yeah, Mika only appears in uh, this one and then episode five, and that's it. Oh, I didn't know she was in episode five, actually. But yeah, yeah I, I kind of... It's the same girl. Uh, I refer to her as sort of like the human of the week in the sense like the monster of the week. She's also the target. Yeah. Uh, which is usually how that works out. Like, how would you describe her? Mm, like, uh, I guess typical little girl that's really talented, but is shy and, I don't know, behaves pretty normal in that regard. In the English one, she's a doll maker because her mom is a doll maker. Is her mom also one in the Japanese? Yeah. I, I think her character then is kind of like the person who follows what their parent is doing because maybe they have a natural talent for it. Maybe they kind of like it, um, but we're not really sure if it's their true passion, I, I would say. Right. It seems like it's supposed to be in this case, though. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, she's kind of just kind of a very standard, like, this is a young child character that enjoys dolls. There's nothing really that stands out about her to me mm -hmm. as that interesting, <laughs> honestly. Like, she's probably <laughs> the weak point of the episode. Oh, this is a trivia question. So, people, if you want to try to pause and think about it, pause after this. But what is at the center of Neflite's star sigil that he consults every week. There's something there that, like, connects to his forehead. Do you know what it is? The stars know everything. They will 
guide me to the next victim, a person whose energy is reaching its peak. Ah, Orpheus the musician is playing his harp. Orpheus has chosen my next target. Mika Cassidy, your energy is mine! <laughs> Dear Mika, I'm sorry I broke your doll. It was an accident. I'd have to check it again, honestly. So I, I just caught it because I was looking really close this week. It was the first time I've noticed it, and I've, I've seen these episodes I don't know how many times, but it's the moon. The yeah. center of that whole star thing is like the moon if you look really close. I thought that was a cool detail that I don't I don't know if anyone else had noticed that. So I just wanted to throw that in here. Um, oh, and then one little thing about Shingo or Sammy that I thought was fun is they put him in a sailor themed shirt. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. And I, that's supposed to be a, a little nod to like, you know, Sailor Moon. And I, I just thought that was a cute detail. Uh, what item does Maxfield Stanton curse this week? That's the French doll, like one of the French dolls. Yeah, and he, do you know, what does he say about the doll in the Japanese? Because the quote about it in the English one is kind of creepy. What is it in English? Oh, he says, I love her face. Her expression is so sad. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the same thing. I thought it was a good thing, like, for him to say as a villain. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I was like, oh. Uh, and it was true. The doll did look pretty sad. Also, I thought, just in an animation note, the dolls, the way they were drawn, was really noticeably well done. Did you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, and the vampire teeth and all that shit. <laughs> yeah, well, and, like, in the changes from cute to evil mm-hmm. were kind of subtle. But the evil dolls, like... Up until this point, I think we've seen more cartoonish mm-hmm. evil. And this time it was like, I think one of the first times we've seen more. What well, I don't know. How would you describe the art style? It's just, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's like a certain term for it, but it's very. If anybody who's listening has seen any um, horror anime from the 80s or early 90s um a lot of stuff looks more a lot of the monsters or demons or whatever look more realistic like that so that's yeah that's what like ito was going for with the little dolls i could see those dolls in like a a inuyasha episode or something Mm -hmm. right uh so very creepy it's a little more direct i think and there's not meant to be humor i think that's what it is there's not really any humor to it what does he ask her to do after he curses the doll? Because he asks her to make ten. Yeah. For him in the English one. Is yeah. it the same? Yeah. That's a lot. Even for like an adult. Because remember, she's making these by hand and it's, she's not like 3D printing the parts or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, <laughs> she has to do all of this. And for how old is she? Like seven or whatever. Um, so that's a big thing. I'm surprised her mom wasn't like, uh, you're going to have to slow your roll random tall man that walked into my home (laughs) but uh, so he curses the doll and asks for all of that and then we get to this scene later where she's working on the new doll and she kind of stands up and shoves her mom down you finished one already yeah i feel so full of energy i have to start the second one i know how you feel mika but you need your sleep I feel fine. It's time to put your things away, dear. Go away! And it's meant to be like really creepy. What did that? How did you like that part? I like how it's drawn. Um, I like. That I like that still frame image right after she pushes her away when her eyes are red. It's like frozen in my brain. I'm seeing it right now. <laughs> I was gonna say yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about, and I thought I agree. It was it was really well drawn. One thing about it for some reason, I don't know what it is, but something in my brain <laughs> clicked when I saw that, and I was like, a, like let a bitch try that with me, <laughs> you know? Like let some little kid. <laughs> 
try to shove me down. That little, I'm six feet tall. What are you, no. Like, do you know what I mean? Just like what, I don't know why. I I don't know if it's that I'm older or that I, I teach kids or something. I don't know what, but just there was this overwhelming feeling of like, if I was that mom, and that little, I don't care how creepy her face was. I would pick that girl up by the ankle. You know, not really, but do yeah. you know what I mean? Just like the, cause the way her mom was just sort of like, oh, Lordy me. And then like, let her do it. I was like, come on, lady. Um, but anyway, this yeah. isn't real life. So <laughs> I guess her mom reacted appropriately. How would you do it? What would you do? In re- I'm serious. What would you do if a kid did that to you? Mm, well, I mean, if it's an, like successfully shoved you down in a way that was actually painful. I mean, I would do the same thing that you do that you said. I'm like, where's your mother? I'm going to bring you to them now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? I yeah. don't know. Anyway, uh, I don't know what it is. It's got to be. I think it's something to do with this. This is a little dark. I just it's where my brain is going. But like being a teacher, there's a lot of trauma surrounding like school shootings and stuff. And half the time the shooters are, like, kids. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who just, like, went off the deep end. So it's such a bizarre thing to wrap your mind around mentally. I think something about this episode and that moment, like, poked that button in me. And I just, I think... Listen, I'm not even judging myself for having that reaction because I didn't expect it. And it doesn't really matter because it's about a TV show. But I was just like, wow. That little girl just made me real angry and I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck you what was her name mika yeah fuck you mika <laughs> don't push people down all right anyway moving on so obviously sammy notices that she's changed and in the english one he's blaming himself thinking because there was like an incident in the beginning where she tried to give him a present right yeah what happens with that do you remember yeah he accidentally uh drops it um or, yeah, I think I think that's technically what happens. I think in the English one, like, the way they make it seem is he's getting made fun of for getting a gift from her. Yeah, that's the same. And then he's all like, oh, it's... Bleh. Yeah, it's, like, very little, like, peer pressure mm-hmm. common for that age. It was, it was a huge, like, a cute, sad moment. Um, what does Usagi in the Japanese suggest to him? That he just has to... To make it better. That he has to go apologize to her. Does she tell him to give the give her a gift, or did he come up with that on his own in that one? Uh, no, yeah, I think she just says that he... that you have to apologize. Uh, I have an idea! Why don't you give her a really nice present? Girls love to get presents! Maybe. In the English, she says that, but then she's like, look, make sure you give her a gift, though. Which... I mean, when you make people upset, you can give them a gift. I, I, I don't think that's actually great advice, though. Yeah. <laughs> I think a conversation is better. Um, and then what does he make for her? That's it's a Sailor America. Moon doll, like an ugly one. <laughs> yeah, and in the English one, Serena thought it was a pig. Is that what she thought in the Japanese yeah. one? I thought that was cute. It did kind of look like a pig, but it was cute. I would, I would put that on my shelf. Oh, oh! so this is one of the first episodes when I noticed uh, a really strong choice with, like, their, what do you call it, everyday wear? Because they're at this doll exhibition, and Amy looks really cute. Oh, what? In her, she has, like, this orange outfit. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. How would you, can you describe the outfit? Yeah, I think she has, like, a orange tank top on, and then she has an orange and white splattered uh, headband on, too. Yeah, and then it's like a dress. And the headband is what really, I think, made it look nice. But she looks super cute. Mm-hmm. And Ray looks nice, but she looks a little bit like... Um, to me, she's giving like 1990s businesswoman who's shopping in Dillard's for like Dior perfume. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's like very specific. I'm like, oh, I saw you there with my mom. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know why. Uh, but her, she was like a pantsuit or like a white yeah. pantsuit and then some like strong accent jewelry that I don't think any 16 year old would ever wear. What, what They're like 14 here. I was like, that's a choice. Um, <laughs> but Amy looked really, really nice. And 
Ray and Darian are at the doll exhibition. They're on the, a date together, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of a cute date. Would you go to a doll exhibition on a date? Yeah, I guess. I'm not. I mean, I'm not like a. I'm not into stuff like that either. Like the same reaction that he is. But if it was, if it was one stop on a whole day of doing things in that vein, then yeah, I would do it. Same, especially if it was like themed for something I cared about, or like mm-hmm. if the other person was really into. It. I kind of love seeing other people get excited about what they love. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. It would be fun in that way, too. It's, dolls generally are not my thing. Mm-hmm. Who is M? Darian and... Who was who else was at this doll exhibition? Besides... Oh, Maxfield Stanton. That's why I put M. <laughs> uh, Neflite. Yeah. So Darian and Neflite have this weird moment. And the way that they sit, they talk to each other in the English one, there's no other way to describe this. It felt 100% like... Oh, yeah, we met on Tinder once, but we're not, like, going to talk about it. <laughs> we're not going to acknowledge... Like, it really feels like that in the English one. It's so funny. Uh, was it that awkward in the Japanese one? Uh, in the Japanese, he, Mamoru says, uh, do you need something? And then he says, then Nephrite says, oh, I thought he's, like, sorry, you look like someone I know. Let's go over this way. No, we've never met. Darian, come on! Uh, okay, I mean, it's it's sort of similar, but no, in this one it was very much like, do I know you? No, I didn't think so. And it's like <laughs> very, very, do you know what I mean? It was so weird. I was just like, what is this, like, DL 90s? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It was so funny to me. Um... Oh, and then I just wrote Shingo's hat, because he has a little hat that says Shingo on it. I thought it was cute. Mm-hmm. Did you notice his hat? Yeah. Okay. Describe our monster this week. It's like a creepy mannequin that has uh, disjointed parts that can m- move on their own and has uh, green hair. And the, it's, the joints are literally missing. Yeah. Right? And it's so there's like sp- uh, blank space where they should be, which I think was such a smart choice because even when the monster is just chilling and not doing anything, just looking at it and the way it's holding itself and moving, you're like, oh, it's so creepy. Mm-hmm. And it kind of triggers all of those like uncomfortable feelings in you, which I think is that's job well done to the animators. Yeah. Uh, for, for making it look so scary. Uh, so the the monster knocks out Shingo and breaks his gift, which, rude. How dare you? Uh, he worked so hard on that. And then the whole point of that, though, is so Serena can transform. And we're back to the whole, like, oh, hide your identity. You, don't tra- you know what I mean? Uh, so mm-hmm. I just thought that was sort of an interesting point. And what did I write? Oh, I said the flying dolls here actually were kind of funny, but only because I think, like, I'm used to the monster being the thing that's attacking them. And then all of a sudden the dolls were back in play. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like I was startled by seeing them again. I was like, wait, what? And those are the copies that she actually made, right? Mm-hmm. So in a sense, she made the monsters like weapon, extra weapons. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I, I sort of like that. How do they stop the dolls? Ray does the uh, evil be gone talisman. <laughs> I I like how much we're getting to see that now because I think they still use it a decent amount later, but definitely cuts down a lot. Mm -hmm. And then we get to see the Mercury VR visor, which is always one of my favorite things to see. I'm still so fascinated by it. Um, what weak point does she discover? It's no use attacking! Watch it! They're sharp like knives! I'll try my VR vision! (laughs) Scanning for structural weaknesses! Yes, 
I detect one in her ankle. Sailor Moon, aim at her right foot. <laughs> the one of the feet. Yeah, they called. They said it was the ankle technically, which I thought was funny because she didn't have an ankle um because the joint is missing <laughs> but yeah it's the foot and then i don't know i don't know if there's something i'm missing about doll lore or whatever do you think there was any particular reason why that was the weak point no i have no idea either i think they just chose a random spot then maybe mm-hmm. if anybody know if listen if we have any like super intense doll people here that listen first of all you're welcome to be here but second of all um if that's like a thing, if like dolls are notoriously like weak footed, maybe it's because they can't stand up very well <laughs> on their own. Yeah. I think I'm overthinking it. Um, <laughs> that doesn't matter so much. I, oh, and we have some really iconic animation moments in this one. The scene of her in, in the window. Do you know what I'm talking about? As Sailor Moon at the end? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you two finally woke up. Don't worry, we taught the bad guys a lesson. Be good friends, you two. See ya! I don't believe it! Sailor Moon saved us! It's so different from a lot of what we see in the show, the way they animated it, and that's another one of those moments that they used in the Deke opening as well. Did Mm -hmm. that stand out to you when you watched this as a normal episode? Yeah, for sure. It looks so cool. And then we get a little of Sammy and Mika at the end. In the English, he, she, I think she gave him a doll, right? At the end again. And then a Sailor Moon doll or something. Yeah. And he says something like, oh, she looks totally cool. And then Mika is like, not more totally cool than me, I hope. And then she's mad at him again and is running away. <laughs> <laughs> and what does she say? Is that what happens in the Japanese one? Yeah. Okay, I'm like, they're children, so it's fine. But I'm just like, I've known some adults that are a little bit like that too, though. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, I, and I'm like, come on, people. Isn't isn't that the way, though? Uh, Alright, so we're at the end of the episode. Before we do, the sailor says, were there any poignant moments that stood out to you in this week's episode that we didn't cover? Uh, just in general. Um, I guess it's more, yeah, the only things that are interesting are from the animation standpoint. Um, like when... When Shingo and Usagi walk in, right when the monster appears, and um, it's interesting that Mika is made up to look like a more mature woman, like they drew her with lipstick on, and uh, the like evil aura coming out of her was really that was a really cool shot. I'm glad you mentioned that actually, because I noticed that when I was watching and I didn't write it down, but I was like, wait a second, is she? have lipstick on and she definitely looked creepy and i thought that was a a cool choice yeah just as a way to show her going more evil was like oh the kids like it's almost like she was possessed by an older spirit or something yeah you know what i mean uh i i thought that was interesting anything else Mm. i guess aside from what we already talked about um in the in the beginning scene when it flashes back to when she gives Shingo the present and he drops it. Um, I love the, not, not like filter isn't the word, but the way that that was drawn to was really, was really pretty. They put some kind of effect over, it's not an effect, but it's like, I know what you mean. They animate it differently to make it, yeah, to emphasize that it's a memory, mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, yeah, I thought that part looked really cool too. Even the way they animated the thing breaking, yeah was very specific and well done and again this is all done by hand and and doesn't it like start with ink and then colored pencils and then or whatever you you know what i mean like they build up so it's like a long process to do all of this yeah i really like this episode uh i'll rate it first today so for we're gonna give the episodes moon stars you guys should rate them too at home for yourself just for fun but for Dangerous Dollies, I think I would give this episode probably a 3.5. Uh, same as last week, just because it's a good episode, but I think it's about the same strength level pro- like story-wise. And even though the animation is a little better, I know this is like the queen of the series. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I know that we're going to see probably even better stuff from her later. 
Yeah. But I think it's one of it's the things that make it unique are definitely the way the monster is drawn and animated and the dolls specifically are so well done yeah. too. And then the moment with Serena in the window or Sailor Moon in the window at the end. Mm-hmm. Those are the three things that stand out to me. What about you? Yeah, I would I would give it the same rating. Uh I don't think it would be it definitely wouldn't have been as good if someone other than Ito didn't do it and didn't have the interesting style choices with the monster. Yeah, because I think story-wise it's sort of simple and plain, uh, but the animation really elevated it a lot. And I have to say the battle was one of the more interesting ones we've had lately because we kind of have had a few in a row that were sort of blah, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, well, not last week, though. Last week was good, too. But this was even better than last week's. And I'm int- I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, what else happens in season one. Before... Oh, Sailor Says. So the Sailor Says this week... Even the best friends have misunderstandings. And sometimes it seems like the hardest thing in the world is to say, I'm sorry. But you know what? For Sammy, it was even harder putting it off to not say he was sorry. Having friends is important. If you have a misunderstanding with them, talk it out. And that means you. Is all about talking out your problems and saying sorry when you should. Which I thought initially, because they lead in with the sorry thing, it was just going to be like, you should apologize. But it was more about like, no, have a conversation and like, you know, work it out, which I, I think is still kind of solid advice, I guess. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I agree, too. Being a little older, the only thing I would caution is, like, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're constantly apologizing to someone and it seems maybe a little out of balance, I guess, you might want to examine that, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, but for the most part, if you're dealing with someone that you trust and you care about yeah if you mess up you should the apology is not even the important part the thing it's more the acknowledgement of of what happened would you agree yeah right yeah but anyway (laughs) hopefully most of the people listening are adults here but i i still like that those little life lessons are in here because i think i said this before the older we get the further removed we are from school the less of that messaging we tend to receive I think a little reminder is from now and now now and then is good. Mm-hmm. All right, that's a fun episode. Um, just some fun news for you. I reached out to the person who does Sailor Moon news. Have you ever seen them? Their stuff. Yeah, yeah. Do you know them? I, I like I, I know who they are, but besides that, no. Okay, because they've done a handful of interviews, and I noticed they had posted recently they interviewed Terry Hawks 10 years ago. Oh, okay. So, yeah, and I thought, because you haven't been able to get her yet, have you? Yeah, because she's not on, like, any kind of, she doesn't have any kind of platform. Right, so I'm gonna, he gave me permission, I'm gonna actually be able to share that old one. Okay. But then I'm I'm also hoping, like, maybe through connecting, I'll, I might cut this end part out, but maybe through connecting with him... We can I can figure out like, oh, how did you get in contact with XYZ and I can let you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we can get updated interviews, you know, with you. Yeah. Yeah, because he might do a segment or something for the show too. So I'll ask him and see um, what we can get. But I just thought that was kind of cool that he was chill with us using his content, <laughs> you know, on here. Yeah. Uh, so that's exciting. And I want to see if he got Eliza because she's the other one, right? Mercury that we're missing oh Li- yeah Liza um she played Ami in the third and fourth season who did her the first two uh Karen Bernstein have you interviewed her no she's not on anything either uh we need to find her she was so <laughs> she's the best in my opinion uh just mm-hmm. the more I did because I'll listen to random episodes later and just the way she affects her voice differently for all the different scenes and stuff like that and her attacks and I can almost hear Tracy being like, do it again for her Mercury Bubbles lines when she starts getting really throaty with it later. And I love that I know all of that intro now, too, because I'm just like, I can like see them in the booth, 
you know, together. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and and knowing that Tracy voiced Sailor Moon too is kind of cute because I'm like, oh, it's like Sailor Moon telling Sailor Mercury to like be bigger, be more. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, that's all, that's all I got for today. Do you have anything coming up? Uh, no, just more. I mean, pretty much all the other interviews I'm doing upcoming are um more people that I've already interviewed some of them, but like they got announced as new characters in the last fire emblem game so it's uh like some sequel interview stuff and then like still doing new people obviously too getting follow-ups is kind of cool though because that you're sort of establishing like a professional rapport with these people yeah it's fun that's awesome well keep going with that enjoy stay out of the cold i don't know what you do about it because i'm here and it's never (laughs) cold but Right. What do you do? Have a fire? Don't burn your house down. Yeah. (laughs) All right, cool. Uh, I'll see you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Moonstar, a Sailor Moon podcast. Like what you heard today? Hop on over to your favorite podcast app and leave us a five-star review. It's the best way to support your favorite show. Come on, guys, do it. <laughs> so awkward. I hate having to ask y'all to do that, you know, but like, come on, it's the. Anyway, uh, for more of Chris, you can find him on Instagram and YouTube at Chris Mayek, C H R I S M A Y E K. For more of Alex, you can find me on all socials at Alex Summers S F E. You can follow Moonstar on Facebook and Instagram as well. Uh, Facebook is going to give you the most updated information and we have the most fun there instagram a little bit less uh but yeah anyway follow that and yeah until next time peace see you moonstar a sailor moon podcast is created for informational and entertainment purposes only all audio clips and sound effects used during the creation of this show belong expressly to the license and copyright holders Tira!